Hey, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today we're going to spend a little bit of time with Familiar Tales, which is the newest book adventure game from Plaid Hat. And a quick disclaimer that I was sent a review copy of this one. This is a heavily narrative-based adventure game for one to four players, fully cooperative. And I'm going to show you a bit of the first two maps in the game, as well as a taste of some of the narrative, although I'm going to skip a lot of it so you can kind of focus on the gameplay and get a feel for how that works. And if you want to hear my thoughts on the game overall, check out my separate review video that should have posted at the same time. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, please consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and you get exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. You can also visit our separate streaming channel for even more great content, listen to our weekly podcast, or join the conversation on our Discord. So to play Familiar Tales, besides the game itself, you do need to access a website. And it's really nice, it can help you set up the game, it's got fully featured music and narration. The main interaction you have with it is saying when your character's turn is over, at the end of each character's turn, danger is going to increase by one. It can also increase from other effects. And when danger gets high enough, bad things will happen and uh, the enemies will activate that kind of stuff. You'll also enter number entries in here as you move around on the board and have different encounters and quests to uh, find out what happens and kind of hear the narration for it. It also has a full rules glossary and a bunch of other stuff, so it's a nice little setup overall. But in terms of the actual game, a lot of the action happens on board. And like Jaws of a Lion and the previous Plat Hat games, like uh, Stuff Fables and Comanauts and Aftermath, it's all played in a book that has like the rules you need on the right side. You can flip through to the next page and it's got a fully featured art that's unique for each encounter. And your party is always made up of these four familiar characters. You'll meet them in a second in the narrative. And uh, sometimes there'll be enemies. You can also like forage for resources. You can have different uh, the encounters in the app. And the main thing you're trying to do is protect this little baby. Although this game is played across three eras. And uh, as you survive each era, that little baby will grow up and uh, change the narrative in major ways. But the core of the gameplay are these action cards. And this is a bit of a deck builder, although you don't like deck build every turn. On their turn, a character will have five cards generally, and each card has a movement value. So you can play the card to allow you to move around on the board. For each dotted line you cross over, it costs one point of movement. Double dotted lines cost two points of movement. And you generally can't cross at all single or double solid lines like these ones here. But you can also take actions with the cards. Uh, you play them to gain for whichever stat you're trying to test. The red mainly being melee attacks, green ranged attacks, blue defending against attacks, and yellow foraging for resources and taking care of the baby. And you can play as many cards as you want. So like if I wanted to do a big melee attack, I could play the four of these and it'd be two, three, four, five, six. The test will tell you what the difficulty is and you roll this die, which can add up to two to your total, subtract up to two to your total, or do some other things. It does tend to be slightly more positive than negative. And if the card values you play plus the die roll equal or exceeds the difficulty, you succeed at whatever you're trying to do, like hurting the enemies or foraging for food or whatever else it is. Now the cards also have icons in the upper left. The most common ones are these exclamation points. And whenever you play the card for a test or for movement, you gain the benefit. So rest will give you back one health that heals you one. This little card icon, which is on these reckless cards, lets you draw an extra card for your turn. But at the cost of adding one of these fatigue cards, a negative card temporarily to your deck, so you'll kind of draw and have to use it later. The chain on the assist cards means you can play it on another player's turn to give them the bonuses, adding a bit more cooperation to the test. And then this die symbol on the focus means that you can re-roll the die when you take the test. But then there are also some icons like this with a little card icon underneath them. And those will sometimes, although not in this case, correspond to icons on items or weapons, and it'll give you bonuses when you play those types of cards, like with certain tests you take. Now, after we've taken a few turns and danger has risen up enough, the app will instruct us to activate the enemies. Uh, they have a pretty basic AI, the app will tell you, but pretty much they just uh, tend to move right towards you and then try to attack you. Or like if you leave the baby undefended, they'll try to drag her away. And there are a few other things you'll see as we play. First of all, there's a little item offer and card offer. Certain effects in the game will give you power, and then you can spend that power to add new cards to your deck, because again, it's a deck builder. And as you resource different components on the board and through other effects, you can spend them to craft items, like with a wood and cloth, I could build this oak and dagger. And they tend to be very much meant for certain characters, like both of these icons, the little fox one and the blade one, are the ones that the fox blaze starts with. So I could theoretically give the oak and dagger to somebody else, but it would be maybe a foolish thing to do. And those are kind of the basics. Generally, the app will tell you how you complete a page. Often it means like, like moving to an exit like this one with all your characters. And as you progress through the campaign, you'll move along these different spots. There'll be like branching choices. You can kind of have like little unique story events you can unlock for your characters. And again, the game's over three eras. And I'm just going to show you like, again, maybe the first two pages of era one. So a very limited amount of spoilers here. But let's hear a bit of that opening narrative, see what the app can do for us. And then we'll uh, jump into the gameplay. The night hung heavy over the countryside as did the dark rain clouds that traversed the sky. The land was hilly and green, 
and mostly uninhabited, save for a modest cottage that was little more than a single room. Lightning crashed as the sound of frantic pounding came from outside the cottage door. Old Marilius called out. Hold on, hold on. Goodness me. The old wizard crawled out of bed and found his robe. But where was his hat? No matter. He looked at the four familiars who served as servants, pupils, and in many ways, adopted children. Flicker, will you get us some light? Blaze and Gribbet, be on guard for trouble. Chalk? The old man looked at the stone golem, which stared vacantly at a wall. <sighs> Tweets, the bird that acted as Chalk's voice, was nowhere to be seen. You, uh, you just keep looking pretty. <laughs> Flicker flit from candle to candle, setting each alight. Slowly, the cottage door became bathed in an orange glow. Piles of books and all manner of knickknacks and curios lay in heaps on shelves, tables, and the floor. Again, there was a frantic pounding at the door, and now they could hear the sound of a wailing infant. Goodness me, a baby? The wizard shook his head. At this hour, in this weather? And he threw open the door, and there was a woman, hidden in a soaked cloak and robes, and in her arms was a swaddling babe. Marilius gasped. <gasps> you? Good gracious, get inside at once. But the woman shook her head. There is no time. Even now, Lord Parrish's agents close in on my heels. Marilius, I feel all may be lost. Please, my daughter, you must take her. And she thrust the infant at the old man. <laughs> Gribbert chuckled and shook his head at this, for he knew children made Marilius uncomfortable, and he would never accept. Uh, yes, of course. And much to the shock of the familiars, he scooped the babe from the woman's arms. In the distance, dogs barked. They have found me. She took several steps from the door, then turned back. Lightning crashed, and for the first time, the familiars could see her anguished face. Please, Master Wizard, hide her well, for all of Principalia may very well depend on her. Perish shall never have her. And Marilius held up a fist to show it was a solemn oath. And then the woman was gone, lost to the night. And the wizard slammed the door shut. Quickly now, all of you. The familiars had never seen Marilius looking so anxious before. If her pursuers were this close, then they will know where she was headed. We have minutes before they arrive. Mm. No, no, uh, don't worry. I shall hold them off easily enough. But the babe cannot remain here. Head for the Witchwood. Hide yourselves and wait for me to find you. What questions do you have before you go? That was Her Royal Majesty, the Queen of Principalia. This precious thing is none other than the Princess of Principalia. Gribbet knows, don't you, lad? Lord Perish is the royal advisor. The scoundrel had me fired from my position as royal magician. No doubt to hide his own evil doings. In the distance came the sound of baying dogs. There is no more time for questions. Marilius barred the door, then opened the back window and beckoned them over. Hurry, hurry, my friends. Flee to the Witchwood and wait for me there. And so they abandoned the hut they had known for years, as on the horizon the sun began to set. The rain had stopped, the thunder was retreating, and everything seemed covered in endless drear. Gribbert moaned. Which would seems very far away. We, we had better hurry. There was a distant chirping, and Tweets, Chalk's other half, flapped down and landed on one of the golem's broad shoulders. All right, so we're on the run with the baby, and the first person to take a turn is Blaze. And here's our fox, Blaze. Her default weapon is a vicious bite. 
Uh, when attacking, if she plays a fox card, if the attack reduces the target's life, it becomes badly injured afterwards, which basically is a condition that's going to cause it to take extra damage from every subsequent attack. She has seven max life and starts out with zero power, and everyone has this generic action to spend five power to banish a card, call a card permanently from your deck. Pretty expensive, but you can do it if you want. She also has a special power to herself. It says each time Blaze gains a resource as a result of a forage action from the board, she can choose to gain food or cloth instead. And those happen to be the things that the baby likes the most. So uh, that's a nice little action. She can be a good caregiver. And her starting action, these four are all generic. It's the ones you already saw. But she's also got her unique hunt card, and it says action. If there are no enemies in play, Blaze gains food. Uh, if you play it for the action, you cannot play it for anything else. So it's kind of an either or thing. I can't like use it to move or use it to do uh, one of these skill tests if I get food from it. All right, so where could Blaze go? She could go over here and resolve this little book event. You have to stop your move on there. So like if I played a card with two move, I would spend one and then wait there. She could run down here to forge some wood, run all the way over here to forge some food, run over here to see what this book has to do. We have to get everybody, including the baby, to the exit to leave. And if we uh, don't defeat the ruffians over here first, we'll get a penalty if we just run away. We can also forge some mushrooms over here. But I think it makes sense to uh, find out what that event is. So I'm going to play Rest for two movement. Otherwise, it's an all one card. It would give me plus one health right now when I play it, but I'm not hurt. And Blaze will just move a single space and then we'll resolve event 102. Let's go to the app. I hear something. Blaze stood alert, her ears held high. Humans on the road, armed and armored. Gribbert nodded and looked around. Take cover, everyone. Let us see what we have. Two thugs came into view, sprinting down the road. One of the thugs spat. Tell you, I saw something. Right here, look around. The other thug shook his head. What are we looking for anyway? Didn't Lord Parrish bewitch the old man? Sure he did, but we're looking for the baby still. Pay attention, you idiot. Parrish says the baby was spirited away by magic critters the old wizard controls. We gotta find him. All right, and you cover this up to show you can't use it anymore. And Blaze has gained one power. All the cards you add to your deck currently cost three, but look, there's actually a bond card that only costs one power, and it sits in front of you and you don't resolve it until all the enemies are gone, but then it'll give you some kind of like little story focused on this character, and will often give you some kind of bonus as well. Um, but uh, for now, let's wait on that. I'd rather actually get three power and level up. All right, Blaze isn't done yet. The two unsavory enemies are three away, so I guess if she used like the Reckless and the Focus, that would get her four movement. And then she would have two, four attack left, but they need a five to be hurt. So that would be fairly low odds. But I could choose when I played the Reckless to draw a card taking one of those negative fatigue cards into my discard pile. That would make my attack much more likely to succeed. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll move four with this. And again, when I play the Reckless card, I can choose to draw a card and take a fatigue into my discard pile. And by the way, the focus reroll doesn't matter at all here because I'm not playing it for a skill test. I'm just playing it for movement. Here's a focus card, by the way. It's got one in each stat. When you play it, you increase danger by one. So the enemies are more likely to activate sooner. So that's a pretty big negative. It only has one movement. And whenever you play it, it uh, goes back to the fatigue pile. So it doesn't stay in your deck except for the one time you play it. Oh, look what I got. Not only is it three attack, but it has the fox symbol, which is going to activate that uh, heavy wounding effect from my vicious bite. That was amazing. All right, so we had one, two, three, four movement, but we'll stop right here with the uh, unsavory. And they have two movement stat themselves. They attack for five. They have defense five, so we have to get to at least a five on our skill test. And each uh, attack will deal one damage unless some other effect like the heavy wounds uh, increases it. And we've got the circle and the square enemy. They spawned at the beginning, uh, one with five life, one with four. So if Blaze is going to do the heavy wounding thing, I think I'll attack the circle so we get kind of the max effect out of it. Now, she is way overqualified for this attack, but I guess the worst the die can do is minus two. So maybe I should play all three of these. Other characters could play their link cards to assist my attack, but I think she's fine on her own. So she'll do a uh, seven here. The link icon does nothing because she's playing it for herself. The hunt does nothing because her weapon doesn't have it yet. But the fox icon will again go with the vicious bite and will make the guy badly injured. So he'll take damage from future attacks, but not this attack. This one will only do one. All right, so totally out of cards, and we get a plus one, so we're three over, but it doesn't matter. We're just doing one damage. So Circle's down to four life, but he's also injured, so actually two more hits will kill him, because each of them will do two damage instead of one. Nice. All right, with all that done, we click end turn for Blaze, and we already defined the uh, order of characters. I have Gribbert going next. He's like an archer frog. And you'll see the danger went up by one. At the end of each character's turn, danger goes up by one. And the enemies, it seems like they sometimes activate at four and sometimes like earlier or later, but it tends to be around when you get to four danger and would increase to five that they'll take their turns. So let's go with Gribbert. 
All right, so Gribbert's also got a bunch of basic cards plus this sneaky card with a little mask there. And that goes with his basic weapon, which is a ranged weapon, which means it'll attack with the green stat instead of red, first of all. But also it says this familiar cannot target enemies that are two or more spaces away. So you can only attack them if they're adjacent. And by the way, this is the basic damage value for all these basic weapons. It's only one, so we don't really have to worry about it. There's also like keywords like silent that might be called for by specific scenarios, but this one doesn't matter. And what's the effect of that mask if we play it during an attack? Ooh, we'll get minus one danger, so uh, the enemies won't activate as quickly. That's what I want to do with Gribber. He doesn't really have great green values. I guess the assist and the sneaky could give him a pretty good attack. Maybe you can throw in the rest. That would be five green. Then he's got two reckless to move. Although he only has to get to here, so one card would get him within range. He could try to forage for wood, and each page defines what the difficulty is for a forage test. In this case, it's three, and it uses the yellow stat consistently. But I don't know if he'd be able to do that successfully. So let's keep things simple. We'll play one Reckless for two movement, and he'll go one, two. And by the way, we could be bringing the baby with any of us as we move, but she reduces each card's move value to one. Uh, the only person who can carry her kind of without impediment is Chalk, and he's going last in the turn. All right, now with us right next to these guys, I think I'll just play everything. Two, four, five, six green. Uh, none of these effects will apply because I'm not going to draw the extra card. But this will remember lower danger by one because I'm attacking. So it's a six attack, lowering danger by one. And of course, I'm going after our friend Circle, who is injured to do the double damage. So I'm over by one and minus one. That's totally fine. We still equal his defense of five. No problem. And note that there is only a single side with a minus two out of all 12 faces of the die. So as long as you're beating the test by at least one, you are very, very likely to succeed. All right. So Circle's down to two life left. One more hit and he will be gone. And these guys say loot power plus one. So whoever gets the killing blow will gain one power. And man, that took danger down to zero. Uh, of course, it's going to go back up by one when Gribbert's turn ends. And uh, wait, it shouldn't be chalk. Sorry, uh, it should be. Oh, no, I guess I did have chalk next, didn't I? Never mind. <laughs> That's right. But yeah, so danger is still only at one. I mean, uh, that really slowed down the enemy's chance of attacking us. But there are some faces on the die that have the danger symbol. So you can suddenly get some extra danger you weren't expecting and have an early enemy activation. And by the way, I never said, but Gribbert's special power is swim. When moving, Gribbert treats water spaces as normal spaces and is immune to rushing water effects. Those don't even uh, apply on this map, but they could later on. All right, now get to Chalk. He's the only large character. Everybody else is small. And it says when playing a card to move, you may choose one small figure or object token in the same space. So he could uh, carry one of the other characters or he could carry the baby. And after moving, place the chosen figure or token in the same space as Chalk. So he's like great at giving bonus mobility. He's also immune to poison. And his basic rock fist, a melee weapon using the red attack for each mountain he plays, he does plus one damage. So he can uh, actually do some extra smashing if he gets the chance. And we do have a single rock card in our hand. It tweets, this is like the bird that talks for chalk, you'll remember. But this is actually a really great action too. It says forage any space on the map without a skill test, chalk gains that resource token. So tweets can just go like grab the mushrooms that are far away or the food or the wood or whatever. Now you'll notice Chalk is also super slow. <laughs> and right now these don't give him any bonus. Uh, man, can he even get into anything? I guess if he used Focus and Reckless, he could move four. That would get him into the spot. And then all these are two attacks. And yeah, I mean, that would certainly do some damage. Although I kind of want to use Tweets. Yeah, so let's use Tweets first. There's a bunch of things to gather and pretty much all of them are helpful for at least one item in the offer. But let's uh, get this Mushroom because it's the farthest away. And again, normally I'd have to be there and do a three yellow test, but because it's Chalk's special power, I just get the mushroom right onto Chalk's card. All right, and then I'll play the four movement. We go one, two, three, four, and let's go ahead and bring that baby with us, and she has to go there. She's not really in danger of being in the same space as the uh, people unless we leave her unprotected. Now he's here ready to punch something, and that's four attack. I'd love to get it to one or two more. And hey, we can do exactly that. Blaze has this chain card in her hand, which again means he can play this on somebody else's turn. And it is a plus two red. So that'll get chalk to six. Heck yeah. Now this does mean that Blaze will have only four cards on her turn instead of five, but that's what a cooperation costs sometimes. So with that, chalk is at six. He's attacking that same injured guy. And oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> There's only two plus two. So it's pretty lucky to get that again. But with the injury, boom, the circle guy is removed. And Chalk gains himself one power, although again, three is the minimum to buy anything really useful right now. I mean, I guess I haven't shown it, but like most deck builders, you draw back up to five at the end of your turn. And if your deck gets exhausted, you shuffle the discard pile and keep drawing. And with Chalk's turn gone, we're going to our last character, which is Flicker. We're at danger two, so still kind of far from activating. But the second enemy is unhurt with four life, and he's not injured, so it might take a little bit of doing to kill him. And here's our final character, Flicker. She's a flying fairy, so she can cross single solid white lines, although not the double lines that we started out next to. 
And she can also move across double dash lines with only one movement. And by the way, a lot of people are restricted to what they can like carry and have, so she can have like the, only the lightest stuff. As for her weapon, it's also a ranged weapon, can shoot as far as she wants as long as line of sight is there. And if she plays at least one wand card, she gets a reroll of the die when she attacks. And she certainly got a lot of wands, although her green values are pretty terrible, so I don't know if attacking is in her best interest. And she has some of her special powers. Illuminate, you may discard one card from the training row, then look at the top three cards of a training row and add one of them to the row. So this is a good way to kind of like call through uh, the training cards. Right now I don't mind any of them, so it's fine. Spark, action, flicker targets an enemy within two spaces. The target becomes on fire but danger goes up by one because I guess of the uh, blaze alerting other enemies. On fire means each time they activate, they'll take a damage before their turn goes. Uh, not really that useful since I don't think the unsavory will ever activate a second time unless I can get him down to like three damage. It's pretty much the same as us hitting him once. Although, I mean, I guess it is a free hit with a pretty weak card. Now, another thing I can consider is have Flicker Forage and do story events because she moves faster and she has, you'll notice, by far the best yellow value. So that's worth looking at. Yeah, you know what the hey, let's uh, go ahead and play a Reckless to move her two to there, the wood. And yeah, I didn't explain line of sight for range attacks. You go from circle to circle within a space and uh, you just trace those exactly. And as long as you don't cross a double line, you are good to go. So it's really pretty simple and forgiving line of sight. Like right now, any of these spaces have line of sight to any of these other spaces. The only spaces we wouldn't have line of sight to is like this one and this one and maybe that one. Yeah, it seems like we would nick the corner there because of the double lines. All right, so instead of attacking, Flicker is going to play two cards for four yellow and try to forage for wood. And minus one, that was uh, good enough because three is the difficulty on this page. So again, we cover that up and she gets a wood. She's still got two cards left. Hmm, she could uh, try to forage the food. She could go activate the other story event. I like the food option. So let's play one card to move and another card for two yellow. And Chalk got two assist cards. Let's play one of them to get her to three yellow. So she is even. We don't want to get a minus here. But if we can get a zero or better, she'll earn that food for us. All right, and plus one. Yeah, there we go. So we have fully forged this part of the map. No requirement to do that, but uh, can be helpful. And that ends Flicker's turn. We should get at least, yeah, one more turn before things move on. All right, and blazes up again. Uh, kind of middling attack values. Although she does have her fox symbol again, so she can uh, wound this guy to make him easier to kill. Man, Predator moves her super far. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, we don't get a reroll. We could use Reckless to get another card. Eh. Where instead, I don't think Flicker's turn will be super important, so I think she'll assist. That'll get us to six attack, and again, he'll be uh, heavily wounded. All right, going for broke here, and oh, thank God. All right, so the minus ones are not hurting me when I go a little bit above, and that's one damage, and he's wounded. But I don't know if we'll get the chance to finish him off. We're going up to, ah, uh, there we go. So again, sometimes it goes off when it's four danger. I feel like it's like slightly randomized, and it'll tell you what to do. So first it says his discontent at four or five. I haven't even shown you the baby yet. Let's look at her. So first of all, you got these two trackers. The discontent shows how unhappy the baby is, and basically you have to uh, take actions and do things to make her happy or badness happens. And misfortune is kind of this running track from when you do uh, things or like rush through pages and stuff. And it basically changes like how you advance to the next era, changes what kind of story you might get. By the way, here is the baby. Uh, this just describes the rule I already said, where when you move with her, you can carry her, but all your move values go down to one. And here's how you can make her happy. It's a perform care action. Uh, if she's at one discontent, there it is. Then you can do a yellow skill test with a difficulty of six and lower it by one. If she's at two, you got to feed her with food. If she's at three, you got to change her diaper with cloth. If she's at four, you can do any of them, but you're really in a bad way. And if she's at five, don't get her to five, but you have to warm her by finding a fire. And those are few and far between in my experience. So the only one that doesn't cost any resources is the first one. But, you know, if you don't have time to soothe her or you can't succeed at the sixth test, then uh, you might have to pursue other options. All right, so this is making her discontent go up by one. And if it had been four and five, things would have been really bad. And oh, look at this. We got an encounter for another unsavory. I won't read all the stuff, but basically uh, we're scared. He's shown up on the 102 space. And then it asks if there are enemies in play. And yes, indeed, there are. And it walks us through everything, but it's really simple. First, we move each unsavory that's not already on somebody towards the nearest person. So that guy's already good. This one just moves on to Gribbert. Then they each make a melee attack. And melee attacks couldn't be simpler. They attack you for five, and it's the exact same uh, skill test you do, except you use the blue defense value. But a key thing is, for defense, unlike almost everything else, they care about how much you lose by. So, like, with a five attack, uh, if I get a four total with the die roll, I take one damage. If I get a three total, I take two damage. You suffer the damage equal to the difference of the attack in your defense. Then, step three, if they didn't attack, they'll move again to get closer to you. And then, like I said, if they're with the baby and none of us are there, they do some bad stuff and raise misfortune. All right, so first, let's go ahead and do Gribbert getting attacked by this guy. Gribbert does not have wonderful defense options. 
I could just like spend all five of the cards and almost guarantee that he won't get hurt, but uh, then he would get to do nothing basically on his turn because uh, these are the cards for his next turn. They're not like some extra cards to defend with. Um, let's see. I want to kill things. The focus will give me a reroll. All the rest of these don't really matter, and they're all equivalent in terms of attacking and movement. All right, so let's try like three defense with a reroll and see how that does for us. All right, so remember a five. Oh, <laughs> we don't need a reroll. We roll a plus two. No damage for Gerbert. That was awesome. Now, in this space, we've got both Blaze and uh, Chalk to get attacked. And in that case, we get to choose who gets targeted. Chalk has better defense overall, and he's got his healing card in hand. So I think he'll play three defense and keep these for later. And he could, again, use Reckless, but I don't want to get those fatigue cards and increase danger more. All right, so three plus one is four, so he does take one damage, but he'll be able to heal it in just a second. And besides, he has the highest life total at eight, so seven isn't really a problem. All right, so that was after Blaze's turn, so Gribbert is up, but all he has, yuck, <laughs> is not a lot. And not even like his uh, little sneaky symbol. He's got four attack, though, so that's decent. Sadly, though, nobody has a link to help him, so he's just going to play all of that and see if he gets lucky. And I think Chalk will be able to finish off the guy with three life all by himself, so he'll attack this uh, new guy with four life. And plus one, awesome, that's just what he needed. Give me a break, dice. Now again, the dice are very friendly, so it's not a huge surprise that I'm rolling so well, but it's still certainly nice. All right, and we're up to one danger in Chalk. And this guy's got three life left. He takes plus one damage from attacks. And with Chalk's weapon, if I attack with Mountain Root, I'll do another damage, so it'll be a one hit kill, but I've only got three. Okay, Gribber just drew an assist. It's only plus one. <sighs> Whatever, I'm gonna go for it. So that's a four attack. Uh, Chalk will heal his one damage, so he's back to full life. And again, we're doing plus one damage if we hit, but we need to get a plus one or higher and there's no reroll. Yuck. All right, so I need a plus one. Come on, come on. Minus one. <laughs> That's not it. All right, so clearly no bonus damage happens when you don't even hit. Ah, darn it. And retrospect, maybe I should have just tanked some more damage with chalk. That would have worked out fine. All right, and we go to flicker and danger keeps on ticking up. All right, so she's over here and she has, again, not great green combat values, although she would get a reroll from this and from that. She has more rerolls than she needs. Wait, but she has a three yellow. Can I get her into the baby? Maybe try to soothe it? Sure, let's try to do that. So she'll move two. Let's try to do a five yellow test to get the baby feel better with a reroll. Remember, it's a six to get her discontent down. So we'll see if it works. So one, two, although she could have with her power gone over the dotted lines for only one as well, remember? And we got two chances to get a plus one or a plus two. That's, wow, that's minus two. Uh, reroll, that's not it. Plus two, whoa! <laughs> She is calming that baby down right in the middle of enemies. Awesome. Yeesh. All right, uh, Blaze, it's back to you. Can you finish one of these guys off? All right, well, Blaze at least has kind of a full hand. Ooh, and Ferocity with three again. Uh, all the rest are basically ones, though, except Hunt, which is a two. But she's got her Fatigue, so she plays that. Danger is going to increase by one, which means the enemies will definitely activate. And she can't realistically hit that one guy twice. Maybe she, like, saves the Fatigue for now. And just attacks with, like, all of these. Oh, my gosh, what does that get her to? That's, uh... Phew. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a reroll. That's kind of overkill, right? But I don't think she'll have enough for two hits. So she's going to do it. And again, I don't have to play that yet, so I don't have to raise danger up. So seven will automatically hit, and we're just hoping we don't get something bad. Minus one, totally fine. We just didn't want that danger. So with her wound, he's down to one life, uh, which means anything will kill him now, basically. All right, a moment of truth. Are they going to activate early? No, okay. So again, usually they activate on four, so that was good. Ooh, and perfect, perfect, perfect. It looked. Gribbert got another stealth mask. That'll decrease danger by one and hopefully give us a whole another turn. Um, so I guess Gribbert will try to kill the guy next to him. One, two, three, four, five. That'll be a full attack load. I could, could get reckless to boost that. Yeah, you know, so let's play this one first, get another card. And it is Leap, which lets him move up to three spaces within line of sight, but it's also a two attack. So that's like three, five... Uh, six, seven, that's great. And we're gonna lower uh, danger by one. But again, Gribbert's getting a fatigue in his discard pile. All right, so no way we can lose. And ooh, that's a power icon. That means if the test was successful, he gets plus one power. And he's already killing the injured guy. So that is two power, only one away from something cool. And danger's down by one, but then Gribbert ends his turn. Ah, oh, man, they did activate it three. Give me a break. All right, so misfortune's not at four or five. So we're just gonna increase it by one. And are there enemies play? Yes, and they're gonna activate. But at least we didn't get a new spawn. All right, so he's on Gribbert again. He just drew a new hand, and it's five cruddy defense cards, and basically nobody can help him. Um, I definitely want to have the reroll in there. I want to kind of keep at least one of those assist cards. So let's do uh, three and a reroll again and keep both of those. Worked out well for us last time. Plus one, I'll stay there. So it'll take one damage, but you saw before there are those cards that heal that pretty easily, so not a huge deal. 
All right, Danger drops back down to zero. It's Chalk's turn. Now we could, by the way, just run, but we'd uh, gain some automatic misfortune if we left, which again, can give us like a bad ending, basically. So Chalk's got to move up to attack that guy and it's across a dotted, so it'd be two movement. Ooh, but he's got a mountain to do plus one damage. So I think he wants to do it. Um, Let's go ahead and use his rest. I mean, he's not hurt to move two. And then two, four, five, six with a reroll with plus one damage. Not going to miss this time. Not going to miss. Uh, did not miss. All right. So that gets him down to one damage, right? Because that guy, yeah, that guy was not wounded. The other one was. All right. So we should be able to finish the guy off in just a second. It's Flicker's turn. Now she's right there, but she has a range attack. So she might want to like try to start going towards the exit while she shoots at him. Of course, you could also just soothe that baby. <laughs> Three, five, seven, eight, ten. What? 10? Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Let's see. Let's like say three, five, seven to soothe, and then three attack. And then if Gribbert helps out with his two, that's five, which might be the kill and blow. Let's uh, try out the attack first. She's got a reroll because she's using her wand symbol. And we're even with Gribbert's health. So we need a zero or better. Plus one danger is still a zero, so we'll take it. So that immediately takes danger to two, although with all the enemies dead now, that's pretty much just to uh, make the baby get more unhappy. And then she gets her first power, so we're all getting a little bit closer to leveling up. All right, and then, like we said, uh, seven yellow against the six for uh, calming the baby down. Flicker is just really charming with the baby. Plus one, yes, back to zero. Happy baby. And that means at this point, there's basically nothing to do except to get out of dodge. We all have to end up right here, which might take a little while. Uh, Blaze is up with three danger. Blaze has a ton of movement, so she can easily carry the baby. So I'm not going to play the fatigue, I guess. Well, I mean, danger is probably about to pop anyway. So sure, I'll play it and go ahead and increase danger. That's one movement. Remember, uh, any card will move you and the baby one. So there we go. Oh, we never did a uh, 103, did we? Let's do that real quick. They stood at the edge of a vineyard and gazed out at the tangled plants that grew in rows among the dark, fertile soil. The sweet scent of grapes wafted in on the humid air. Plants, many plants. Tweet chirped as Chalk absently scratched its hindquarters. Well said, my friend, as always. And Gribbert patted the golem on the arm. Many plants indeed. Let's take yonder path the farmer so thoughtfully laid down and see what we can find. Plants! Many plants! Gribbert nodded as if Chalk and Tweets made perfect sense. <laughs> yes, nothing gets by you. I'll take that as you're in agreement with me. Rook. All right, cool. I got Blaze up to two power again. No one's to the magic number of three. And then Blaze can, I don't know, uh, move again <laughs> and save the assist for somebody else, bringing the baby with her. But of course, as you might imagine. Oh, actually, wow, we have to five danger. I guess that can happen sometimes. All right, Gribbert, after assisting, only has a single card for two move, but Chalk might be able to carry him. So let's have him run over here. And whoops, forgot to mark that. All right, but now I have to imagine that the danger is going to pop. Yep. And it just increases misfortune by one because there are no enemies. Boom. Although, Look at that, we've got uh, plus two danger because they don't want us to just like sit here with no enemies for too long. That shouldn't be too tough because Chalk can carry people. So let's see. Um, he'll go ahead and do a one and he'll bring Flicker to here. And then he'll do a one to bring Flicker in here. Or I guess that's Gribbert. And then a two one way and a two back. Boom, boom, the whole team is there and we are done our first page. And I think I'm actually gonna stop there because believe it or not, you've seen the major mechanics of the game. But just to show you what the level up options might've looked like, uh, we have the wood and Blaze remember has the power to turn any foraging into a cloth. So she can get enough for the oak and dagger. That would give her sword icons that did nothing before, uh, plus one damage when she attacks. And uh, for each fox she played, instead of doing that like uh, injury token, she would instead gain plus one to her attack value. So it makes it easier for her to hit, makes her do more damage, pretty awesome. And then also leveling up cards that uh, we saw flickers at one power. If she got to three, she could buy slow time. I mean, technically anybody could use it, but it's clearly made for flicker. It's got even higher yellow values, even higher range attack values. It has her wand icon that helps her out. And you can also discard it instead of playing it to get danger minus one, kind of like Gribbert's little stealth thing. Or for a more generic card that anybody might like, although probably Chalk as the tank would like it best, uh, this is guard. Look, two movement, two melee attack, and three guard, and it's a link. So you can play on anybody when they're getting attacked to uh, keep them alive. Nice theme there and nice power. But there you go. That is a very low spoiler taste of familiar tales. Uh, if you like what you see, go check out my review. See what else I think about it. Uh, you did notice I didn't play with the official true solo rules. That's because I don't think they're very good <laughs> until they get some kind of patch or something. I'll explain more in the review, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.